Hello and welcome. We are the Good Cholesterol, the only channel that's good for your heart. Today I'm going to be playing Planet Zoo. So I'm continuing my campaign playthrough. So this is campaign number two, um, which is set in Madagascar. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe below as it really helps us out and will allow you to stay up to date with all of our new content, including more Planet Zoo campaign scenarios. All right, so let's get started. Welcome to Madagascar. It's quite the change of scenery from dreary old England, huh? <laughs> Apart from the weather, I suppose. They don't call these places rainforest for nothing. <laughs> the zoo you'll be working in is an ape sanctuary, where we're doing vitally important conservation work. Not just for apes, but for all kinds of species. But apes? Well, apes are some of the closest relatives to humans there are. And yet, the way the world treats them is like... Well, very much like some of us treat our actual relatives. <laughs> anyway, that's why I'm determined that our operation here does some good. If we can all leave some part of the world in a better state than we found it, we'll have lived lives worth living. And speaking of states, I have a horrible feeling I left the house in the right one. <laughs> when I get back, I expect my life won't be worth living at all. <laughs> What do you think of Madagascar, then? Bit warm for my taste, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, this is Bernie's primate sanctuary. It's not just primates, though. We've got all sorts of animals. So why don't we go and have a look at some of them, eh? We'll start by taking a look at the red ruffed lemurs. They're the ones that look like they should be in a Shakespeare play. <laughs> Come on, let's head over to them. Okay, so it seems like this part is still going to be very tutorial, like very similar to the previous campaign. They do get more complicated as time goes on, so hopefully this one won't be quite as much of a tutorial as the previous one. Does it just want me to fix that wall there? Red ruffed lemurs are found in the rainforests of Masuala. That's in northeast Madagascar. They can actually live anywhere from 15 up to 25 years. Fancy that, eh? Okay, when you're ready, let's go find our Bornean orangutans. Okay, I found the orangutans. Now what? The Bornean orangutan is such a marvellous creature. They're always a big favourite at any zoo they feature in. And they're also the biggest tree-dwelling animal on the planet. <laughs> Assuming you don't count any lions that got stuck up one. Oh, why don't you take a better look at them? Open up their information panel and go into the animal camera. Aren't they just incredible? Okay, yeah, this part seems very tutorial-like. Let's go and have a look see at some of our beautiful well, for bonobos. those of you who don't really know <laughs> how to play the, the game, this is actually very helpful. Oh dear! It looks like we've arrived just in time. One of the habitat's barriers has collapsed. And wouldn't you know it, one of the bonobos has made a run for it. We'll need to catch them. But before we do, we should box up the other bonobos to stop them escaping too. Select the habitat boundary to bring up the habitat information panel. Alternatively, you can just pause the game tab. and replace the barrier. Now, we'll need a vet to recapture that escaped bonobo. But it seems our last one left to do some research in the wild. Not an ideal situation. So, we'll need to hire a replacement, sharpish. Go into the zoo section, and then into the staff management area. Oh. Oh. Okay, yeah, that's can't a relief. have a zoo so without So while the vet deals with our bonobo friend, let's go fix up their habitat so they can't escape again. Head back over there. As you can see, the barrier's collapsed. Someone's taken their eye off the ball, obviously. Let's get this one replaced. Select the barrier and then we'll edit it. Delete the broken section of barrier and replace it with a brand spanking new one. It's not really letting me select it properly. Okay, there we go. Good! Now that we've done that, we need to make sure to add climb-proof barriers to the top. That way the bonobos won't be able to climb out. Just make sure you've got the correct piece of barrier selected when you do that. 
Nicely done. And I think it's high time we unbox those bonobos, wouldn't you say? <laughs> the poor mites will get sad if we leave them in there for too long. Select the habitat barrier to bring up the habitat information panel again. So, it turns out that as well as the old vet leaving, the zoo's mechanics did too. We'll need to hire a couple of new ones so we can help stop any more breakouts. You see, mechanics do all sorts of helpful things around the zoo, but one of their most important jobs is taking care of the habitat barriers. <laughs> Without mechanics around to repair them, the barriers will crack, crumble and fall down. And before you know it, we'll be overrun with escaped animals. Go into the zoo section and then into the staff management area again. Oh, gosh, we have been busy, haven't we? Good work there. I'm off for a cuppa. Oh, I think Bernie wants a word with you. Sure, Bernie can have a word with me. I guess he is sort of like my boss. Oh, I hear you had a bit of an issue with an escaped bonobo. The main thing is that you dealt with it swiftly. And more importantly, without the animals stealing someone's clothes, putting them on, and then walking out of the front gate. You see, another key responsibility for our vets is animal research. Researching animals allows vets to unlock new enrichment items, additional information for our education resources, enhanced breeding programs, and improvements to food quality. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the animal's food, not the vet's. It'll take more than a research grant to improve the staff canteen. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, research is a key part of running your zoo. In order for a vet to undertake research, they require a research center. <laughs> and once again, that's something that this zoo is missing. So let's build one. I've marked out an area for you to put it. Now, you've probably noticed that there's already a building where I want you to build the research center. Don't worry. You see, the building that's currently there is actually a hollow shell, so we're able to place our new building inside of it. If you select the research center for placement and then hover over the shell, you'll see that it asks if you want to add the research center to the existing building. Okay, click to add it to the building. Oh, but that won't place it in just yet, though. First, we'll need to rotate our research center so it automatically connects to the path when we place it. This part can be tricky. I often have trouble connecting these to pre-existing paths. I can't even tell if it worked. Right! Splendid work! Now that we have a brand spanking new research center, we can give our vet something to do in there. Oh, by the way, it's worth noting that the vets will only do research when they're not required to do any other jobs. That said, you can change what jobs a vet does via their information panel. But let's not worry about that just now. So, let's get our vet researching ring-tailed lemurs. Go into the zoo section and select Vet Research. First off, let's pop down two education boards. Place them on the habitat barriers at a height that guests can see, or, if you like, pop them down on a stand. I do like putting them on stands. I just think it looks much neater and more realistic. And from the drop-down list, select Ring-Tailed Lemur. Although I'm sure that last part was obvious. When you link an education board or a speaker to an animal, you need to make sure that said animal is close by. If it isn't, the guests will get confused and won't learn as much. Okay, now that they've been put into position, we have to tell them what animal to display information about. Select one of the education boards to bring up its information panel. Okay, now that we've done the education boards, let's pop down a pair of speakers. Speakers play audio to the guests so they can learn while they look at the animals, instead of having to go through the laborious process of reading. Oh, one thing to bear in mind is that it's important not to put the speakers too close together. If you do, the guests won't be able to understand what's being said. Now we simply need to link the speakers to the ring-tailed lemurs. 
just like you did with the education boards. Fantastic! Oh, it's worth remembering that education boards and speakers both need power to work. They won't do much good without it. Oh, it looks as though our vet has completed their research on ring-tailed lemurs. We'll need to collect the results. We can do that by clicking on the notification or by going back into the vet research area. Go on, collect your research rewards. Just so you know, vets will continue to research an animal even after successfully completing a research level. <laughs> I suppose when you're in the zone, you're in the zone. Well, now that we've enriched the lives of our guests, let's enrich the lives of our ring-tailed lemurs. Some animals, like lemurs, will have a climbing need. That means they have a requirement for a certain amount of climbing space, and you can fulfill that requirement by building them a climbing frame. Let's find out how much more climbing space our lemur friends need, shall we? Select one of them and bring up their information panel. Next, click on the Terrain tab. Ah, now, as you can see, the lemurs need quite a lot more climbing space. But as it happens, I've already got a climbing frame blueprint built for you. So you can either pop that down or build one yourself from scratch. By the way, it's not always just climbing needs that you have to worry about. Other animals might need a certain amount of water in their habitat so they can go for a swim. <laughs> they certainly do keep us on our toes. Oh, that's a great climbing frame for them. They're going to absolutely love it. Do you know what would make them even happier, though? Nicer food. But that's true of all of us, though, isn't it? You can unlock better quality food for animals through research. Luckily, we've already unlocked some for the lemurs, so all that remains is to make sure they get served it from now on. Let's bring up the habitat information panel by selecting the lemur habitat. I am having trouble selecting it. I guess I can do it this way from the list. So, a new climbing frame and better food. Oh, you've really spoilt those lemurs rotten. <laughs> now, I think it's time we looked at one of the zoo's most important responsibilities. Releasing animals into the wild. You see, when we feel an animal is ready, we can release them into the wild. But what makes an animal a good candidate for release? Well, their age is an important factor. I mean, we can't release an animal that's a juvenile, just as we can't release one that's gotten too old. They'll also need to be fertile. After all, the idea is to repopulate the wild, so the best candidates will have a high fertility gene. And together, the age and fertility of a candidate will determine how many conservation credits we'll be rewarded when we release them. Now, conservation credits are vitally important. They're the lifeblood of your zoo, because earning them allows you to adopt even more animals. And what's more, the animals you can adopt will be of a higher quality. So, with that in mind, let's pop over to our orangutan habitat. Okay, I'd like you to find Ageng, the Bornean orangutan in the habitat, and select him, please. You can either click through each orangutan in turn, or select the habitat barrier, go to the Animals tab in the Habitat Information panel, and find him in the Animals list. Okay, gotta select the habitat, and then find the Animals list for the habitat, and should be able to find him there. I know it's sad to see him go, but he'll be happy out in the wild. And he's a he's wonderful over. candidate for release. Young, strong, and fertile. Excellent work there. You've definitely got potential, you know. Ah, I see you've been doing some homework. Although, it hardly seems like work when you're learning about something as adorable as a ring-tailed lemur. I imagine I'd have got much better grades at school if there'd been less algebra and more aldebra. Tortoises. Lovely. Now let's build a new exhibit in the gap that's been left. 
Just add it to the building like we did with the research center earlier, then pop it into the gap. Perfect. The next thing to do is adopt an exhibit animal to go in there. How about a healer monster? Open up the exhibit trading section and adopt one. When you send an animal to an exhibit, it'll automatically be given the correct setup. But that doesn't mean it's completely ready for them. So let's finish it off. We'll start by adding some enrichment items. Click on the exhibit to bring up its information panel. Good. Now click on the layout tab. That's the ticket. And the last thing we need to look at is setting up the different windows. So click on the Windows tab. There's also an exhibit education board. Pop them down near exhibits to teach your guests about them. Let's add one now. Yes, education can be one of the more difficult parts of the game. So it's always important to add these things and then also make sure that you lower the price of the um, walking education tour things that you sell at the information center. And then now that they've added tour groups, that helps a lot too. Just like the education boards and speakers we put down for the ring-tailed lemurs, you'll need to link these to the healer monster. Go on! Lovely stuff. Now our guests can learn all about our venomous friend here. Right, now, I've got a bit of a big job for you. I need you to increase the number of species in the zoo. You'll probably want to adopt both habitat and exhibit animals to do so, which will mean building plenty of new habitats and exhibits for them. Go on, off you pop. I'll check in with you when you're almost done. Okay, I guess this is the more freeform part. So now um, we are left to our own devices to finish up the last few pieces of the requirements for Gold Star. So I think we're going to need some more exhibits. I mean, well, maybe both exhibits and habitats. So let's start by making another habitat and figuring out um, another animal we can put in it. All right, so I mean, this area over here seems like a prime candidate for where we could place another exhibit. I mean, habitat. Exhibits have small ones. Um, it's plenty large and has some interesting terrain, which I always appreciate. Um, and there are already paths going to it. The hippo habitat's pretty cute, although also kind of small. Okay, let's look at all the animals we have and if there's any that we can put into a new exhibit or if we're going to need to get a new group of animals from the trading center. Okay, so a taper exhibit is one option. There's a lot of lemurs on this list, but we already have a lemur habitat. I guess we can do mandrels. Okay, so now that we've picked our location and we know what animal we're going to do, I guess we just got to check what the requirements are as far as size for the um, area. And then we can start building uh, a barrier and a pathway for people to see. Okay, I think maybe I'm going to speed up this part so that um, we can get through this habitat building more quickly. Alright, so since this is going to be a monkey type habitat, we need to make sure that there's plenty of climbing areas. We can look at what options there are of the pre-built ones and we'll place those first just so that we can make the whole habitat look pretty before we um, put in the walls. That looks very pretty, other than the fact that 
I think it looks slightly messed up because of the hill. Okay, there. Now that I lowered it down to the ground a little, I think it looks better um, because nothing is floating, even though some of the plants are maybe halfway underground. <laughs> That's good enough. Moving on to a staff path. And then a person path. I guess I will keep the boardwalky look to match with the rest of it. Okay, let's double check the requirements for what the mandrels need before we continue. doing some research at the same time. Okay, so they're definitely going to need more trees and more enrichment and some shelter. Okay, so first we'll place barriers and then we'll place the animals and then we will do the plants. Okay, now the uh, staff path connects, and therefore we can place the animals. Okay, they're not happy with the terrain, so let's do some terrain painting. I'm just going to kind of randomly paint this on here until the percentage gets appropriate. <laughs> Ugh, almost there. Let's place some more enrichment stuff in the meantime. This is a feeder, so that's good. These are important to place early just because they kind of mess up the um, the terrain a little bit. Now my walls are climb proof as needed for monkeys. I'm gonna put down a regular feeding platform too just so that they have lots of food. And then some toys and some shelter. Trying to make it so it's not floating, but it also has to be tall enough for them to be able to use it. This is yet another climbing enrichment. Oh, since the train's so uneven, I'm not sure where to place it. I will just sink it into the ground and it won't be as useful for climbing, but at least it won't float weirdly. On second thought, I'm just not going to put that one in. I think it looks kind of ugly. Put some bedding inside the shelter. Okay, I'm getting rid of all the plants that they don't like. Now it's time to prettify the whole area with rocks and plants. I'm trying to make this little cliff area that was formed by the um, feeder. I'm trying to make it look more natural by adding a bunch of rocks. And then I'm just gonna pick a bunch of plants that they like and scatter them around. Lots of lush trees make the habitat look very beautiful. And lots of underbrush also makes it look pretty. Okay, 
I like to put lots of plants at the bases of the rocks and the um, trees and around the fences. As you can see, I just pick a plant and then scatter a bunch around and then pick the next plant. I think it's really starting to look pretty and like a lush rainforest. Thankfully these kind of animals are fine with a ton of plants so it's easy to make the, the place look beautiful and natural. Okay, I think we're almost done here. Uh, just a few last plants scattered around, and it looks gorgeous. I am also making a taper habitat, so let's go check on that one. The taper has arrived. Let's add some shelter and some plants, and a feeder, of course. Since he has water source already, I don't need to add a water source for drinking. People are going to get a lovely view of the tapers from that path up above. Add some plants around the edge of the water source just to make um, it look more natural as well. Thankfully, tapers like a lot of plants too, so I can pretty much put in as much as I want. Although, if I put in too much, it might obstruct the view of the people above. The bright side of these tall trees is that it doesn't obstruct the view. Just scatter some various foliage around so that the whole thing will look beautiful. Plus the tapers get a little stressed out, they like uh, privacy, they're shy around humans, so some of the foliage will help um, give them privacy. <laughs> so many uh, sped up voices from the little people. If the sped up music and sound effects really bothers anybody, please feel free to comment below and I will try to change it in the future so that it'll just have regular speed music instead of the sped up version. Okay, the tapers are stressing out. They must not have enough um, area to hide. Add these little don't disturb the animal signs and that should help. I'm also gonna add more foliage directly in front of their little house to help shield them. I think that should do the trick. They seem to be happy and I think their exhibit is done. Okay, this is one remaining exhibit that needs an exhibit species, so let's see if we have my, any and we'll move it in. you have been busy, haven't you? Splendid! But now that you've adopted all these lovely new species, we need to make sure they're nice and happy. So let's get the average welfare across the zoo nice and high, shall we? And by we, I mean you. Go on, get to it! Okay, so now I should take a look at the animal list and see who is unhappy. Okay. 
Okay, so we've identified who's unhappy. Let's go try and fix it. Let's speed it up again while we're doing this. They need shelter. Let's put some bedding in there as well. Get rid of the plants that they don't like. Okay, I guess that was a lot of plants. <laughs> Let's replace them with plants that they do like. I feel like that should do it. Maybe they just need enough time for the happiness to go up. I'll put in more enrichment as well to help out. Lovely job there! You should be proud of yourself! Not only have you expanded the zoo and kept the animals as happy as Lanny, but you didn't bankrupt us in the process. Amazing! Wow! Well, you've certainly transformed the zoo. I barely recognize it. A wonderful new exhibit, some fascinating new species, and you've done wonders for the animals' welfare by enriching their habitats. <laughs> Who doesn't love playing with a three-foot-wide soccer ball, huh? <laughs> I mean, other than professional soccer players. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't easy, though. I expect money was tighter than a possum's pouch. Plowing all those funds back into the welfare of the animals doesn't make running these places a picnic. Although, it does make me feel a little less guilty about how much our gift shops charge. <laughs> no. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason to run a zoo is to help animal kind. Sadly, it appears some other people have far less noble goals. All right, so we achieved gold. I guess that means we're done with this episode. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe below if you haven't already. Feel free to leave any comments with suggestions for other Planet Zoo videos, and I'll be continuing with the Career Scenarios videos, so stay tuned. Goodbye.